Size does matter. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. I often joke, if it matters in life, it matters in the college admissions process. And size does matter in the college admissions process. It has always mattered. And it still matters. And it will continue to matter. And why are we talking about this today? Well, because I've thought long and hard over recent months about the importance of the size of one's college list. I have done previous videos on this very topic, the most recent of which argued that students have no reason if they're putting in the legwork ahead of time and engaging in the reflection necessary and the research necessary uh, to compose a wise college list. There is no reason why a student should apply to more than six colleges or universities. But, and I still feel that way, but let me tell you sort of the journey to getting back to that point. Over the course of the 2024 uh, admission cycle, the 2023-2024 admission cycle, uh, I have been on a daily basis challenged by very lovely students and parents uh, with whom I work, uh, who uh, often will work with me on maybe a couple applications and then work on what I thought were sometimes a few other applications on their own. And then I come to find out, well, it was not just a few more applications on their own. Sometimes it was you know, many, many more applications on their own. That's okay. I, it's not like I need to work with students on all applications when I work with students. But it got me thinking again about how wonderful these students are, how thoughtful they are, and how they have uh, done what a lot of other incredibly wonderful students and parents have done over recent years, which is they get into this this sort of mentality of, of sort of being in a horse race or an arms race. And um, they don't want to miss out on acceptance letters in a highly selective environment when they're applying to very selective colleges in many cases. So what they do is they say for insurance policies, they don't say it like this, but this is how their mind is working. For insurance policies, we need to apply to more schools because they are so capricious, these very highly selective colleges and universities. We To be safe, we should apply to as many of them as possible because many very strong schools we'll strike out at, but maybe we'll just get into one of them and we have a much better chance of getting to just one of them if we apply to 20 of them as opposed to six, Craig. Like, you know, Craig, don't, you know, I know you want to just do six with us, but uh, be real. We'll do a few privately, you know, but again, those few end up becoming 13, 14, 15. Uh, and I feel bad for these families and I think long and hard and I look at the admissions decisions that these students and other students with whom I work um, you know, uh, get at the end of the process. And I will just put in a sort of a side note here, you know, the 2024 uh, admission cycle that is the 2023-24 admission cycle that is basically ending now when this video is being produced in April 2024, I have seen, I'm very willing to admit it, more weightless offers than I have ever seen uh, for students with whom I work. I don't work with the world. I work with a relatively small select group of individuals because there's only one me and I'm not a big company. There are a lot of big profit hungry companies in this, in this industry. And uh, some are lovely, some are very unscrupulous and there's everything in between, but I am one person. I really try to do high quality work with all the students with whom I support. And so I can only see so many real case studies in a given year because I am in the trenches with the students helping them on their applications, and there's only 24 hours in the day, so I really do limit myself uh, to, frankly, the double digits only in terms of helping students vet that many applications in a, in a, in a given year, really, frankly. Um, so I, I, I obviously see quicker uh, meetings with students who want to show me something really fast, but in terms of my support wire to wire with applications, I can't really go into the triple digits even because uh, now that's not the number of students. I'm talking about total applications. So again, I don't have the w widest sample. This would not be like an authoritative medical study that I could publish because of course I don't see that many 
relatively. But what I do see has, as I've said in the beginning of this video, has challenged me multiple days of every week, if not every day of every week over the last seven, eight months, nine months, to really think long and hard. Is my recommendation for applying to only six colleges still operational? And there have been days when I, for instance, see a student who's amazing get into, let's say, seven or eight of 20 colleges he or she applies to. Uh, and I wonder to myself, well, what if that student had only applied to six? What would it have happened then? Would he or she have only got into one or two? And is that the worst thing in the world? So, you know, you think about this in my role all the time because I'm always very open-minded to changing my opinion in support of whatever is in the best interest of the student and the family. And so I've thought long and hard about this. And the fact of the matter is I'm, I still come back to the same point I, I started with, which is if you put in the time, energy, reflection, research necessary in the front end of the process, meaning before July 4th, of your going into your 12th grade year. If you're doing weeks, if not months of reflection, research, uh, so on and so forth, throughout junior year, maybe even younger into 10th grade year, there is no reason why you should not be able to compose a very well thought out list of best fit institutions for you at the safety possible and reach level, all of which would make you very happy to attend these schools and would allow you to only apply to six. And you can still, you can do that still. That's still doable in that particular scenario, statistically wise, you know, let's say the student only did get into one or two schools. Most likely they would be the, the safeties if the student has safeties on the list, but it's possible he or she could get into maybe one or two poss possibles or reaches too. I've had students this cycle even, the 2023, 2024 cycle, apply to seven schools and get into all seven. I've had some students who've applied again, not with me necessarily in all 20, but who have applied to 20 schools and have gotten into fewer than half of them. Uh, I've seen some students this year apply to, let's say, eight schools, some of which with me, some not with me, and get into six of them. So I've seen all different combinations and permutations of you know the statistics of how, what percentage of kids are getting into where. Uh, in terms of what I'm working with with students, um, you know, I'm still seeing pretty darn good success rates overall with my overall class of 2024 cohort in uh, the high school graduating class of 2024, those students entering college in 2024 in the fall. Uh, but I understand the perspective of a family that's like, you know what, Johnny or Janie wants to get into reach. Why should we limit ourselves to two reaches, two possibles, and two safeties, Craig, when we could apply to two safeties, two possibles, and 16 reaches. Maybe we'll have a better shot of getting into one of the reaches uh, if we apply to 16. Here's my counter argument to that. And it's the same one I've had all along, which is I have seen for this for years now, as many years as current high school seniors have been alive, I've been doing this. And I have seen for years students, what I deem to, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but over apply me applying to, let's say, more than nine schools. I mean, I don't still prefer nine schools, but that's a healthy number in this environment. Um, but let's say you're applying to 15, 18, 20 schools, and I see a greater incidence of, statistically speaking, students getting blown out in terms of statistics, you know, having much lower batting averages in terms of getting into colleges when the numbers of colleges overall apply to get bigger with the exception of if you're applying for the purposes of purely getting merit aid and therefore just literally pumping it up that list with safeties. But if you're doing it with reaches because you're scared you're not going to have enough reach and impressive and prestigious and status-oriented options, I think you're going about the process wrong. Now, you can do it. And I, when I work with families, there are some students who do it. I respect these individuals. I don't necessarily share each and every one of their values. But what I would say is... I think you're putting yourself through the ringer if you're not willing and able to do the, the hard, heavy lifting in 10th and or 11th grade necessary to really decide which six to nine colleges, let's say, are the are colleges, all of which I'd be really happy at. I've done my research into not only them, but let's say 
nine, 18 other schools and I've cut the other nine or 18. And I've now got a solid list of six or nine. And there's a balance there. There's, there's safeties, there's possibles, there's reaches. I think you're still in a much better position if you can narrow it down and ultimately only apply to, let's say, six to nine. Again, I don't really recommend going over six, but let's say you do. I would only go maybe up to nine. Um, I think you're in a better position still to get into more of the a higher percent, percentage of those colleges than if you spread yourself too thin and over, apply to all these other schools because you're trying to get a reach. You're trying to get a really great reach. You might as well cast a wider net. That psychologically makes sense to a lot of people, right? But in so doing, you are not spending, in my opinion, the time, energy necessary in the months leading up to the process and in the application process itself to ultimately, for these highly selective schools, create a bespoke experience for the application reader, and therefore, you're diluting your chances of getting in or diminishing them because you do start to recycle essays because it's just a machine. You're a machine. You're now just pumping out application after application after application because you're you're covering all your bases. You want to have insurance policies. And the applications start to sound alike. They start to use similar paragraphs in the essays. Uh, now, again, depending on the, what is a reach for you, maybe there won't be that many more essays, but for the really, truly selective colleges in the United States, I mean, these colleges are like death by a thousand cuts now. They're asking for lots of little short answers. And yeah, you can theoretically recycle from one college to the other, but should you, you know, wouldn't you be better served spending the summer before your senior year doing really in-depth research into the six seven, eight, or at most nine schools you're definitely applying to. So you know those schools for like the back of your hand so that when it comes time to apply, you're going to be able to, with your critical thinking skills and your communication skills, create application essays and short answers. And if you have to interview, interview in such a way where you're going to be speaking only to that college throughout that supplement or that whole application and you're not going to need to or even want to recycle content from one to the next to the next as much as you'll have to recycle content from one to the next to the next once you start getting over that let's say magic number of nine so that's why i say just cut it out with the arms race i know it's an arms race i know how you can get sucked into this particularly if and when you do not get into your early action or early decision first choice People go absolutely guns, guns blazing into um, regular decision. And I actually would recommend they do that to some extent too if they um, did not already really have original, unique applications compiled and prepared and curated for each of the, let's say, six to nine colleges that they knew that they were already going to be applying to in the event they didn't get into their first choice ED or EA school. Because regular decision is a complete, I can't use the language, but it's a shark infested water um, these days in a test optional environment in particular. Yes, some colleges have pulled back on test optional, but I mean, most are not going to do that. So as a result, the Wild West is occurring during regular decision and crazy decisions happen uh, for a lot of different reasons. And like I said, this year, I just feel like we're having three cycles. We're having E the EDEA cycle, the early cycle, we're having regular. And then we're having now basically a whole nother cycle with wait lists. Again, in my years of doing this, I have never seen so many wait list offers. And my whole rhythm is off because uh, I do have a handful of students who I am basically fighting with to the finish, helping them on their letters of continuing interest uh, in ways that maybe I would have one a year. Now I have a handful. And that's not something that I like. It's not something I feel good for that they're having to endure. But in some ways, it's good because they can fight another day. It's particularly valuable, I think, for students who are full pay students uh, and are not requesting need-based financial aid because lots of rules stop applying, right, wait list, um, that maybe did apply uh, regular earlier. But in any case, that's a whole other story and a whole other video. But the point being, We'll see what happens. I don't know what will happen. I, the good news is all of my students have really exciting options from ED, EA, rolling, you know, priority and regular. But I have seen, like I said, a higher incidence of waitlist. So this keeps the kid 
psychologically in the game through April at least, if not into May and or June. And I have in the past, of course, seen kids get in off the wait list at schools in May, sometimes as early as late April, uh, in May, and as late as late June. I have seen that. It, it's been very rare in my practice, personally, in my individual independent college admissions consulting slash coaching practice. But when I was working in schools, you know, I would always see a handful at least per year uh, of that happen. Uh, but now I'm seeing even bleed into my my uh, independent coaching practice. And so what that means is that colleges are using it more as a leverage for yield um, improvement depending on what happens this year. This year has been a weird year, remember. FAFSA is a mess as of this filming still. So there's a lot of students who, because of financial reasons, may be less willing to sign on the dotted line by May 1st. So there could be greater... Uh, students number of students to uh, say no to offers of admission simply because they can't get a definitive answer on aid because the college can't give it to them because the federal government's form is broken uh the other reason that's been different in the 2023 2024 admission cycles in the event you watch this in 2027 or something so this may not apply to that year is uh affirmative action officially changed in the uh, summer j- j- june 29th of 2023 so this is the first admission cycle the 2023 2024 admission cycle is where we're working in a post affirmative action world so the way in which colleges have been practicing internal conversations about who they're accepting and why has had to change and so how that will pan out i don't know yet and very few if any colleges are revealing anything about that in april of 2024 but what i will say is all the colleges had to change their internal procedures and processes. So that has changed who's getting accepted. How? I'm not quite sure yet because, again, I only see a very small spectrum of the full spectrum of college applications going out to these colleges in any given year. But of the selective ones, which I work with a lot because students generally and parents are generally curious about and want to work with me when they're really aiming high, um, I would say that there's many, there are many more wait list offers in my cohort. And so We'll see how those pan out. We'll see how those pan out, and that will help me ultimately decide if maybe I'm speaking gibberish here in this call and this video, and in fact, I should be saying apply to nine or 15 or something, but I don't think I'm there yet, anywhere close, in fact. I am still putting my stake in the ground and saying that if you're doing the due diligence necessary in junior year, maybe as early as ninth and 10th grade year, but certainly junior year, online visits, virtual visits, uh, visits to your high school from college admissions officers, local college fairs, local, local nights at a hotel in your region where you can speak to a college admissions officer. And even if you have the money and time to visit multiple college campuses and take a lot of time on the website, not just the admissions website, but the departmental websites and the other uh, websites for that college, you can learn so much in this age about a college that if you take the time necessary to do that, in 11th grade year and into 12th grade uh, summer, the summer before 12th grade, uh, I have a high degree of confidence still that you're going to get into a happy number of colleges of the colleges on your six college list. And yes, if only those are safeties, the reason you need to do the due diligence is that you were happy with your safeties. I did another video years ago about, you know, you want to love your safeties, or I forget the exact name of that video, but you can find it on this channel. And basically... That's the argument. Like you really, I no one loves their safeties when they think of the safety at first blush, but why not? Why can't you love your safeties? With the exception of the fact that you think you could have got into a more selective school, what's keeping you from loving your safety? Why can't you do the research into the safeties? Here's the real kicker. The reason why most students would rather overapply, meaning apply to 15, 20, in some cases I have heard of students applying on the coalition app just in order to break out of the 20 college limit on the common app (laughs) um so 25 colleges 30 colleges you hear these news reports of a kid who got accepted to 75 colleges how do they do it they use the common app they use the coalition app and they start using institutional apps but again that's another video for another day um where was i going with this the point being when that happens um you it's easier for these individuals to just pop in their mind They, they gotten so good at applying to colleges in their mind that they would rather just pump out another five college applications than do what they could have done all along and they still haven't done, which is research the colleges. Like, just research them. And and really write down journal. It can be on a Google Doc. It can be on a Word Doc, whatever. Write out the ways in which they're different. 
how are all 30 colleges you're considering different? Because they all are different. Now, there are probably a lot of similarities that make them say, oh, they'll all be good. I can marry any of them. But is that really true? Would you marry any 30 people in a dance hall or at a dance or at a party on a Friday night? Or would you like to get to know them a little bit first? That's the thing. Most students and families don't take the time to get to know the people they're courting, i.e. the colleges that they're courting. You would certainly think about doing that if you're going to have a lifelong marriage with someone or want to have one, right? But why aren't students and parents doing that with colleges? Well, because they think it's a four-year investment. Well, the kid still has to live there for four years. The student has to live there for four years. Or kid to me now because they're younger. But the student has to live there. Young adults, they have to live there for four years. Look at it like a short-term marriage <laughs> uh, or at least going steady for four years. This is serious stuff. So you, there are differences. Focus on the differences and you can get that list down because you have priorities, you have preferences, you have proclivities. You should be owning them and winnowing down the list accordingly so you can get that list down to, uh, again, at most nine, but ideally six. And you want balance even number of safeties, possibles, and reaches, so you're covering your bases, so you don't have to become a full-time college application a holic during your 12th grade year or summer before your 12th grade year. I want to save you from that. Now, again, like I said, most people don't want to be saved. Even very smart people, lovely people, good people, they don't necessarily want to be saved because it's easier for them not to do the research. I don't know. I don't think they teach research anymore in high school. I think people are so bifurcated in their brains that we're so sensory overload is happening with all the social media and the addictions and and everything that people are not willing to slow down and do the research. Like pick up a book, pick up the Fisk Guide, pick up even the Princeton Review. I'm not a fan of it, but pick up a book and read what other people have to say about some of these colleges and reflect on that and then connect that back to you. Like this is critical thinking 101, but they do not teach it in the vast majority of high schools. And even parents who used to be critical thinkers are so busy these days, they're not critically thinking. So they're just saying, let's all just let's apply to 20 schools. Let's apply to 20 schools. And I want to make very clear, I'm not trying to insult people who apply to, I, some of my favorite students this year apply to 20 schools. It doesn't mean I can't disagree with that. Like I, I like them. I think they're great people, but they, like many others, found it something that it was easier for them to apply to 20 schools than it was for them to apply to seven, eight, nine and let go of the other potential options. Because in their mind, I guess there were they they were open-minded enough to go to any of these 20 options. So but the only way that's possible in my mind is that they didn't do enough research. Uh again, I'm sort of sort of like a chicken or egg sort of challenge, right? Like what what makes sense for you and your value system? That's what you should do, obviously. Don't just take my random advice because I'm just a random guy floating through the universe just like you and we may never cross paths in real life. So you don't have to get my approval. Do what's right for you. But having done this for a number of years now, I would definitely argue that to enjoy your 12th grade year, your senior year in high school, to remain in good relations with your parents, to keep amity in the home, uh, and be a well-adjusted teenager enjoying your last year in high school, I feel like you owe it to yourself to try to apply to a few, as few schools as possible, all of which you would be thrilled to attend. And in some cases, that's kids just applying to safety schools. In some cases, that's kids applying to one safety, one possible, and all the rest reach, uh, depending on, again, that student and their, their value system. Uh, but I think you do owe it to yourself to do the fewest number of schools possible because, A you're, uh, I think, going to have a, you're going to really have done the work necessary to know that these are the right schools for you. I hope. If you've done, again, I'm not saying just start with six and just commit to those six in 10th grade year and never look anywhere else. Like you're you're going steady with just these six the whole time. You'll never even consider a seventh. What I'm saying to do is throughout ninth grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade year, cons sure, consider tw 250 schools in ninth grade for all I care, and then winnow it down to 200. And then by the end of uh, a ten, 11th grade, you winnow it down to uh, maybe 30, 40. And then by this, by August of 12th grade, or the right before 12th grade, depending on where you start school, by that point, you should get it down into the double digits and hopefully down to the single digits. That's really where you want to get it down to. And again, that only happens through a long, drawn-out process of research, reflection, conversation, Re rinse and repeat with your counselor at school, with your parents at home, with your friends, with yourself. 
But who even talks to themselves anymore? Who even has the time to think quietly or reflect over the kitchen table if you're even having dinner with your family? Um, so I understand why it's not happening, but it should happen. It's a huge financial investment. It's a huge time commitment investment during the prime of your, your life. You want to be in the right place. So you owe it to yourself to do the research into all the schools you're considering and would ever consider. But I think you also owe it to yourself that by the end, you don't apply to all of them. You only apply to the best safeties for you, the best possibles for you, and the best reaches for you. And if you're being honest, that number should at most hit nine colleges total. And ideally, I think you can get it down to six. If you don't know how to do it on your own, or you want help figuring out how I would, and I've done some videos like this in the past, my college uh, uh, um, list deathmatch videos. If you want support and guidance and instruction on how to do this and, and create your list, then book a strategy session with me. I will talk just about that. I love doing this. But interestingly, also, as I have been doing this more years, interestingly, fewer and fewer families really want to talk about the list with me. They want to talk about the resume. They want to talk about the essays. They want to talk about uh, what extracurriculars to do in high school, when to take the tests, what courses to take, all of which is very important too. Don't get me wrong. But the list is sort of like, well, you know, we'll apply to wherever we want to apply. Like, that's really important. Like, you're, that's what you're working toward. And uh, look, I can't force people to talk to me about things they don't want to talk to me <laughs> about, but I would rather have more calls with students and families about the list. Let's do the list. In fact, I used to offer a service called The List, but what happened was no one was buying a service just called The List anymore. They were in the sort of 2006 to 2012 range. But then in 2012, I don't know if it was the iPhone, I don't know what happened, but something happened and all of a sudden people were like, you know, we'll just, well, the list is such a fungible document. We'll create a, a new list at the last minute and we'll create three lists and we'll apply to all of them. And so there was less of a need for, I guess, families in their mind to pay me for a service called the list when they would much rather pay me for the game plan or a strategy session or application completion support um, guidance and such. Um, and so those are the services that take notes. So no one's, the list is like rarely the entire focus of a strategy session with me. It's sometimes maybe mentioned in passing. I wish it was mentioned more. I wish I could have multiple strategy sessions with every student with whom I work just about their list. And I, of course, do that as part of my my uh, Simply Meticulous package and the beginning of my Early Bird August package. I do uh, talk about the list in great detail because I take it seriously, even if the student doesn't or doesn't want to. I try to slow the, slow the student and the family down a little bit to make sure it's well vetted and that these really are the best schools. If we're going to start working on applications together, I don't want them to have second thoughts three weeks down the line when we already completed the application, right? So it's very important for me when I obviously am providing a service that the family and student gets what they want out of it. So I do my best to vet the list. But honestly, if I wasn't involved, many students, I know for a fact, because I've worked in high schools where I haven't been as intimately involved with every step or every machination through this process, I've seen students in late October of their senior year, decide on October 27th, they're applying to Cornell early decision when for the last two months, they thought they were applying to Penn or early decision. How is that possible? And it can happen randomly sometimes because maybe a coach has changed their mind or something, but it, ha it happens every day in October for students around the world. And that only is possible when not, not enough thought has been given to the list. I guess it makes sense why there's divorce rates so high in this country too. Maybe parent, maybe students, not parents, students or parents, maybe just people don't vet their spouses well anymore either. So if they're not vetting their spouses well, maybe they're not, of course they're not vetting their college well because college is only supposed to be four years. If you're not vetting the partner you have in life for the rest of your life well, then why would I expect you to vet your college list well? So I, I, here we go. I could talk about other topics, but that's not what this channel is about. So I am talking about college. And so the end takeaway that I want you to have is not about who you choose to spend your life with, but rather don't apply to more than nine colleges. That's the max. That's the max I'm going to allow you to do. Obviously do what you want. Don't blame me if you do something wrong. Uh, but what I will say is six to nine is sort of like a really great sweet spot. Do not get wrapped up into the arms race that will take you into the double digits. And certainly if you're approaching... 20, those are, there are exceptional circumstances, I will say. I mean, like, there are always exceptions. The exceptions prove the rule. When you're an actor, 
you got to apply to a lot of colleges. When you're applying to these very selective performance and acting majors uh, you, in these programs where they get you, give you pre-reads and all, there are certain majors where you do need to apply to at least 15, 20 schools. There are. It's crazy, I know. But those are exceptional situations. The vast majority of students on earth, but especially the ones I work with, are not in those situations. I, I do occasionally get an actor or a very extreme person who's ma majoring in something that's very unique that requires an extremely different toolkit than the majority of students with whom I work. But I would say that that, again, is the people watching this video are rarely in the most extreme cases too. So just extrapolate out the fact that you're probably normal. <laughs> you're probably normal. So it's, if you're applying to like history or even computer science, you do not need to be applying to 35 schools. You do not need to be applying to 17 schools. You should try to get it down to the single digits. Okay. Business too. I mean, again, I could go down the list. Most majors, I just mentioned acting. That's the only one. I mean, again, there are a few others that I could mention, but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole round because I don't want to continue sharing exceptions because the purpose of the call is to talk. This is not a call. This is a video. Yeah, I usually do calls with people around the world. And that's why I call it a call. But this is a virtual YouTube video um, is to get you in the frame of mind that Craig in 2024 still believes very strongly after a half an hour of talking to you that you should apply to no more than nine schools and ideally six if you're a median mode or mean high school student. Okay? Okay. If you enjoy this video and you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one for parts or all of the college admissions process, you can go to my website, collegemeister.com. If you like this video and you don't ever want to work with me, still please give me a thumbs up. Please like this video and also subscribe to my channel. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.